This is a pile of thermal optics worth just under $15,000. All of them are a variation of the Adder line from AGM. They come in the form factor of a traditional rifle scope, but have a superpower of thermal vision. I'll link to a video below that explains how this exactly works at a fundamental level, but the challenge that I am tasked with today is showing you guys the difference between these optics and hopefully help you understand this world a little bit better. So, here I have four different optics with two different objective lens sizes, and then two different sensor sizes. The TS35-384 and 640, and then the TS50-384 and 640. The latter being the sensor size. They come with a small CR123A backup battery that mounts in the top turret, as well as a USB-C to USB-A cable for charging and data transfer. They all record internal video with audio. There are four separate color palettes for viewing different temperatures, and they say that these things have up to 13 hours of usable runtime. And they come with a nice mount from a company called ADM. I opted instead, though, to use side lock mounts from Kinetic Dev Group because I found these easier to swap around the optics for this video using those mounts. And the Mag Shack has the mags you need at a solid price all the time. From Smith & Wesson to SIG to Glock to Taurus, from ARs to AKs, they've got it. If you don't believe me, go check the link in the video description to head over to themagshack.com and check out the massive selection they have. The rifle we're using is a Smith & Wesson Volunteer XV Pro in 5.56. To get started, we had to get a good zero on these optics, which was a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. We originally set out to get a zero at a 200 yard target. That was a mistake. Out here on the range today, testing four AGM thermal optics. We've got it on the Smith & Wesson Volunteer. Josh is here with the sweet mustache. What's and up, it, it is kind of chilly today. It's a good day for thermals. Very good day for thermals. Despite our efforts of heating that steel target with both a hand warmer on the back and then a blowtorch on the front, we couldn't quite make out the hits long enough to move the reticle and then get that zero refined. So we're taking a torch to these targets to try and warm them up because they were about the same temperature as the air and we couldn't see them. <laughs> we're also doing a little hand warmer trick here, but very heavy steel, so probably won't help. The process for this type of optic is a little bit different than a traditional optic because you're not actually moving physical parts inside the optic, but rather moving a reticle on a screen. The reason this is a mistake is because 200 yards is getting towards the edge of usable images for zeroing these thermal optics, especially because there is no optical zoom, only digital. So you're essentially cropping in on the image. Not only that, but each model has a different zoom range for some reason. I don't know. Being that the 384 and 640 size sensors are already small, that turns into potato vision at the top end of that digital zoom real fast. So after a phone call to AGM, we found a new way of zeroing at 50 yards instead of 200 and actually got a usable setup going across all four optics. Ultra high-tech zeroing target inside there. See if you guys can see, those are hand warmers. And this was a trick that was told to us by some of the folks at AGM. It's actually a pretty, pretty neat way to handle it because this depth that you have gives enough separation so that the box itself isn't hot. The crazy thing to me here is that each optic has the ability to store five different reticle setups with five individual zeros. So you could have one for a 5.56 and a separate one for a 300 blackout or maybe a 6.5 Creedmoor. Plus you can display what distance the zero is for. So for instance, if you were hunting at 150 yards one day and then 50 on another, you could have separate zeros for each. That's super handy if you spent a significant chunk of change on these and want to be able to swap things from gun to gun or be usable in more than one situation. The next interesting point is the internal recording. First things first, the audio is absolute trash and I apologize for the quality. I was hoping it would be better and actually usable. Way to do captions, sorry. 
Okay, there's Josh standing next to the 100 yard. We're going to zoom in. So that's one, cl one click in. See if we can get him nice and sharp in focus. Second, the shot activated recording is actually pretty rad. Basically, it grabs the seven seconds prior to the recoil and the seven seconds after. And if you're shooting multiple rounds, it'll grab the seven before the first shot and the seven after the last shot. It's a great feature for making sure you get footage of that epic hunting trip, right? Or whatever you're shooting at. There are 64 gigs of internal storage, which is plenty for these tiny little videos. The power button on top, the record button, and the color palette button on the top are totally usable with and without gloves, although they tend to sort of run together when you put gloves on. They like, eh, you can start to lose where they are. The quality of the images uh, across the line are pretty good. The last time I used a thermal optic for any length of time was a few years back with Armasite. I'll link to that video below. And this is actually pretty close to being on par with those that were much more expensive from only a few years back. I'm genuinely impressed with how much detail comes through on these. Like, especially when you start getting up close, you can see in some of these shots, it's like, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. My negatives on these optics are pretty simple. I wish there was a second button, like a back button for navigating menus. Man, a back button would be nice. The click wheel on the left-hand side is okay, but if you accidentally click past what you were attempting to get to, because you're in a hurry, you have to go back around the horn just to get there. I also think attaching the USB cover with a string on the end of the cap with a fine little thread is a bit annoying, although that's probably not something most folks are going to access super often, and I don't know. I, I don't really like it. And like I said earlier, the, the audio on these is absolute trash. All right, since we're not sure if we got that on that last try, so we're in fusion, green radical. We'll zoom in eight times. And we can zoom in to 16. So which one of these is the best? Quite obviously, the most expensive one. That's, that's just the easy answer. The TS-5640. It has the largest objective lens, so it can see the most, with the largest sensor in the group, and therefore will output the cleanest images. Okay, so I am here at the firing line. We have shut the range down. We have made the range cold. It's chilly out. I've got my ear pro on, keeping my ears warm. So we've got the TS-5640. I've got that off of a gun, so that you guys know that this is not a dangerous thing. We're not doing it pointing a rifle at Josh. Josh is behind the camera, and he is going to walk down range, and I'm going to show you with this optic what that looks like so that we have good known distances with a meat target. Josh, you ready to be meat? Yep. All right, hang on. Let me, uh, let me get my recording started. Okay, so you can see his phone. You can see his face and his sweet mustache. <laughs> Are you ready, brother? Yep. yep. All right, start walking. I'll, I'll have to deal with focus. We're at two and a half magnification. You can turn around if you need to and make it easier on yourself. Yeah, well, here, we'll show you guys the range here. So, we'll start out at 50. Hey, Josh, stop at 50. Yep. Okay, so he's walking to about 50 yards or two and a half base magnification. All right, so here we are at 50. Okay, so see this white square on Josh's chest? That is a hand warmer. He also has one in his pocket. I can see that clear as day. And you can also see his exposed skin is much lighter. This is good, what I would call positive identification for a human target. Very interesting. All right, go ahead, brother. All right, so let's head out. We'll go to the next berm here. He's going to keep walking. Sorry for the shakiness, guys. I'm just hand holding this. And I'll have to change the focus again as he kind of continues to walk down range to keep him in focus for you guys. Okay, so up on the burn here at 100. Let's make sure we got him in focus or good enough focus. Okay, so I'm going to actually, so we're at two and a half magnification right now. I'm going to crank this in just a touch. 
So that is at 5x magnification. Let's see if we can get him in better focus or not. Right there. So you can still see the hand warmer in his front pocket, and we can make out that brighter spot in his jeans. His hands are nice and bright. You can see that's a 635 yard burn way back there with the dots. This is boring on. We'll zoom in a touch more. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this on. Yeah, I don't know that I would use this even. That's that's that magnification. This would be okay for hunting. Like you can make out a decent animal. You can tell the variations in the animal there. I think that would be fine. All right, Josh, go ahead. All right. Now we'll go out to two. He's going to walk even further back to two, and we'll see what that looks like. Let's see if I can find a more stable position, maybe here on the table, so that it's not shaking around quite as much. There we go. So I shut this down on the table. I'm mashing my face against the table, so you can see them. I will do this. Okay, just killed the recording. So we can get him in focus while he's walking. Very interesting. targets we were shooting at for 200. However, we also have to consider the price. At a $4,700 price tag for that top end, that better be outputting some great images, right? Like that better be good. So what do things look like for the more affordable models? Affordable is a relative term here. Before, oh, it's not affordable, it's so much money. It's a thermal optic, it's gonna be expensive. Talking about relative here. The base model TS35384 is actually not bad at all, especially for an MSRP of just over 2,600 bucks in this form factor. It's absolutely usable for shorter range hunting. The key to any thermal optic or using a thermal is positive target ID. You have to know what you're shooting at. And the best thing for that is a really clear image. And to get the best image with a thermal, you have to spend some cash, plain and simple. So I guess all that is to say two main points. Good thermals have simultaneously gotten cheaper and are still expensive. The ability to see in pitch black, no matter what, is on another level for hunting or defensive purposes. So if you wanna have a superpower, get a thermal. And before someone says something about night vision, they are complimentary and fill different roles. You know what though? Get both, moons out, goons out. 